get closer to that. Um, yeah, what, what is your question? Just a quick question. Uh, can, is, is there any liability in in the fact that we own that? And if, if there was an accident or if someone, if you turned it into a parking lot and someone got injured, it's our property, isn't it? Aren't we liable? Well, uh, there's, it'll never be turned into a park, into a full-fledged parking area. The town was, I think, for like six to eight cars or something for use of the, uh, for the pathway and but either way, it's still a liability. Yeah, true. And I don't know to the extent of that liability. Uh, I mean, that's a very good question. State Route 20, you would want to go through that Smith Curry Road in the triangle, and that was, that was the purpose of that. So if you if you have faults or even selling it, then you don't have that secondary access. Uh, I know the design of the access there was they came up with six different alternatives that it was heavily considered and debated, um, and I think. Uh, largely uh, determined by uh, uh, an agreement between the, the county and the state uh, highway authority. Uh, I think that's how uh, that was dealt with. My understanding is that the county required the second access because they were told the federal grant required the second access, and then the federal grant required the second access because they were told the county required the second access. Essentially, yeah. that's all. Yeah, so it was a series of of um, using one another to justify the need for a second access. And now we have a requirement on both levels for a second access. That access will be to, and it will be a safer access to the reconfigured uh, Park of Road rather than going out. Access, access in State Route 20 on a curve, on a banked curve, uh, to try to get out that way one way or the other. Are we ready for a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think, I think we can move on from uh, our discussion and public hearing to uh, business item number four, a resolution uh, of Board of Directors of the Island County Public Transportation Benefit Area Corporation approving the Island Transit 2015 through 2020 Transit Development Plan. Okay, I will move that the board authorize resolution number 8-15 of the Board of Directors of the Island County Public Transportation Benefit Area Corporation approving the Island Transit 2015 through 2020 Transit Development Plan. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to authorize resolution number 8-15 of the Board of Directors of the Island County Public Transit Benefit Area approving the Island Transit 2015 to 2000 transit, uh, to 2020 transit. Any further questions or discussions on the motion? I'm sorry, I had to step out for a portion of this. Sure. This is a plan and it's not legally obligating us to do anything in there. It's our best guess as to things that might happen, but anything within this could change. Yes. And it may be amended. And it may be amended and it is annually reviewed. Any other questions? All those in favor of the uh, resolution? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Finally, uh, and, and thank you very much for your participation. And we'll uh, continue to answer questions about the plan if they continue to be uh, specific questions. Um, our last item of business is discussion and action to change dates and times of the regularly scheduled board meeting for November 27th, which is a Friday after Thanksgiving.
the first December 25th, which is a holiday recognized throughout the country uh, of Christmas. And uh, Mike has given us just a copy of calendars that we can yeah. refer to. Um, and I'm hoping to just to discuss on this. We ask that board members think about this in advance. Uh, I think the one thing we might want to know is that uh, in November we have a work session planned. Do you know what date that is? Uh, maybe I have it on one of my calendars somewhere. The night. So we have the workshops tentatively scheduled for the second Monday. Yeah. yeah. So there's a Highland Transit uh, workshop scheduled for the ninth at 9.30 in the morning on the 9th of November. And there's something scheduled for December on the, what it? the 14th. On the 14th. What about the 20th of November for our regular 14th? generating extra staff work that needs to be ready for the 18th. I guess one of my questions would be is the work sessions are under our control because they're topical discussions of things that we want more in-depth conversation about. If we know we need an action meeting in December, maybe we can forego the work session and have the action meeting on that, that day and just do the business we have to do and not create additional work for ourselves in December. Mm -hmm. and work session. I mean, we'll just replace the work session with the, with the regular meeting and not have a work session that month. Yeah. We'll have a regular meeting on the 14th. Yeah. 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 The, I was just the 14th. 
just have the 14th and not have a work session because work sessions are so that we can learn more and make decisions, but we can learn more and make decisions in January. Yep. Yep. So the current suggestion is one meeting in December on the 14th, which if we haven't brought it to conclusions before that would be our budget adoption meeting. We will have had uh, <coughs> documents to review starting well before. Okay, so I make the motion we change to November 27, 2015 business meeting date November 30th, 2015 and the December 25th, 2015 uh, business meeting date to December 14th, 2015. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded to have our uh, full Atlanta Transit Board meeting in November on the 30th at 9.30 and to have one meeting in December on the 14th of the full board. All, all those in favor say it. aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Mr. Chair, I, as long as we're talking about meetings, I just need to let you know that the <coughs> meeting that's going to be on the 17th of this month, or of September, which I think got changed, I will not be able to attend due to a work uh, conflict. Just wanted to let you know that in the street. Oh, thank you, actually. Yeah, you knew that. Uh, <laughs> Way to take over the seat, Jackie. <laughs> Moving right along, uh, is there additional uh, public comment and input at this time? Is it, this is general and uh, I was uh, asking for an update, it's my intent to ask for an update on motor vehicle access as we relate to um, vehicles um, for Island Transit. So there was one uh, motor vehicle accident on, I think it's June 30th, mm -hmm. and um, I was wondering, um, I had some questions about how it was recorded and how um, we followed through on reporting protocol. Generally speaking with most public agencies, if there is a motor vehicle accident involving a public vehicle, and um, there are certain things that have to be done. I contacted Robin and I asked about protocol in our case, and she said that it was outlined by 94 CFR Part 655.44. I have a copy of it here. I'm asking today to find out. Um, I don't want specifics about an individual, but in general, do we do alcohol testing after an accident, regardless of whether or not our driver was at fault? Do we do alcohol and drug testing? I want to have to refer this administrative question to Kim. Suppose yes, we do. Um, when it falls under a certain criteria, we follow that criteria. What criteria is that? Is that the criteria demonstrated here in this? Because um, I have a copy of the it's the. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what you have there. Um, I have a copy of Code of Federal Regulations, as indicated to me by Robin. I got a copy of the email from her, and I took this down from the internet. It is part of GPO government. Um, it's part of the MTA. So, I, mean, I, I feel comfortable with the documentation that I've done. Um, so, if you want to look at it, but I mean, it's online. It's it's public consumption. It's a public record. Yeah. We have a, we have a guide we go by also um, for the feds, and one of the criteria for our accident, if um, the driver was not cited, if the other driver was cited, then you don't have to take that operator in for testing. Where is that written? It's not in this. It's in section. Uh, uh, subsection 2i. In this? If it's a non fatality accident. I'm looking at non fatal not. accidents too. If alcohol test required by the section is not administered, because it was required, if you look at it too, and I sent you a copy of it, I think Jill yeah, will have yeah. one too. Um, 
And I, I don't have your email address, but I'll provide you with this. I brought you this set. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it's got a copy of the accident report. It's got a copy of uh, the everything. Okay. Uh, it sounds like this is something that can be followed up. Uh, it's possible because this will probably take longer than three minutes. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we have to begin the discussion. Sure. Okay. And I just want to be reassured of two things. The one, that this is the policy of Island Transit in the event of a motor vehicle accident. Well, I don't I care if it's a classified employee or if it's a management employee, that I, this is the policy that we adhere to. Well, I, I believe, and Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we have a policy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't believe it's necessarily a verbatim adoption of, of this policy, but that's something that we can yeah. I have both of the documents that um, we went by, and one part of it's a, right. a copy of our policy. I just didn't bring them to the meetings. I didn't know we were going to be discussing it. And the other copy is the federal regulation that we follow yeah. regarding okay. that accident. Well, that, well that's great. That, that, well, I'm reassured. And uh, if there's so, the, the answer I'm hearing from our operations staff is that. They are fully aware of these federal regulations and that we have copies of them and that are uh, procedures have one more question. Were these tests done? In this in this instance it yeah. was not required. It was not because it's a, um, an FTA safety sensitive employees um, uh, we followed FTA's drug and alcohol post accident guidelines. But the drug, it's very clear that you do in, in this one case, within so many hours. This was not a mass change. transit vehicle. The person driving it, although. Wasn't it a Prius? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that issued to that It's employee? a non revenue service vehicle. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in that we can, I, yes, I'm sorry. Sorry. I think we're going to need to. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I agree Good. Yeah. that this is going to go over the three minutes. Right. Well, and then no, we it's... need to start discussing this and, and clarifying this for the sake of you know the citizens and the taxpayers that we are following a prescribed protocol, that we do so efficiently, that we don't um, fudge. I don't know what the right word is, but you know, just say, oh, this is, should be okay because it clearly wasn't his fault. No. We uh, have well, to this have is a rule this, of law. This is something that we can follow up outside this meeting. Okay. Any, any further general comments, Ken? Mr. Chairman, relative to that, I'd just like to comment that our drug and alcohol policies um, are reviewed by the federal government when we go through federal audits. Mm -hmm. And they audit all of our, uh, 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 all the requirements that we have to be for receiving federal funding. And one of the big items is drug and alcohol policy. And that gets reviewed regularly by the federal government. Okay, thank you, Kim. So that does encourage us to Excuse use me. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Jeff? Is it Jeff or Jeffrey or Jerry? Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. I have them all over the board. Uh, we have in our risk pool, I'm assuming, that there are standards we follow for certain in incidents and report reporting requirements that need to be, the pool needs to be notified right away on certain types of things. It might be good at some point to schedule a presentation to this board about the risk pool our claims rate, our, our uh, incident, you know, our incident rate, so we can learn more about our our insurance policies and the types of requirements that you have of us as well. I'm sure, sure that Ken knows, but uh, you know, our some of our biggest exposures on the insurance side of things. So it'll be nice to know where our limits are and where we're covered and where we're not. Okay, great. great. It doesn't have to be today or yeah. next month. Yeah. It can be sometimes when things are slow, not December. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, one last, uh, one more comment of the general sir. Um, according to, um, uh, and we'll get to the, to the FTA, the federal um, government checking your guys' um, um, books before you get federal money, um, most every grant agreement that I've read in the team comments, DOL, com uh, DOL certification, um, 2012 FTA visit, all of these things were done via attached documents. They were never viewed personally. The board is responsible, the governing board is responsible for setting policy by adopting a resolution. The last time those manuals have been updated, and believe me, they are plagued with a lot of stuff, was 
resolution A2, uh, A12, A-12, <coughs> by Mr. Hendricks and the prior board. So it definitely, the, the entire manual needs to be redone. I'm telling you that right now. It, it's not good. However, in accordance with USDOT, along with, you, you have the FEMSA, you guys fall under a lot of different policies. Right. Okay, a, a lot of different ones. Um, because you are a recipient of federal funds, you fall under the USDOT and ODAPAC policies, which requires a drug-free environment, a drug-free workplace. All of these exempt people off of the drug uh, testing is illegal. When's the last time a random year analysis was done in this building? A long time. Um, this misuse there. However, that vehicle, a revenue vehicle, is considered a revenue vehicle any time it's driven. Doesn't matter well, how we're going. I, I it, think, it, was, it was a revenue vehicle, I, and any time you're in a revenue I think vehicle, we're going to we're going to continue. Uh, uh, this discussion outside the meeting is not something we can resolve um, um, if there's a difference of interpretation of the regulations it's not something we can resolve I got interpretations right from USDOT well, we, we have, Chair, Mr. Yes. Point of Order, this is supposed to be a comment period, not a discussion yes. okay, and if I can make one comment the policies and procedures, and we've gone over this uh, I believe last meeting and the meeting prior to that um, we're in the middle of negotiating our first contract with the union and policies and procedures are going to be affected by those negotiations and will be updated in all with them. Yeah. Okay, so this is, we've, we've gone over this and rehashed it. it. We can't change everything overnight. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Sean? I would just like to say that everyone in operations is required for random testing everyone in, in the operations department so there are no one that's exempt okay thank you except hopefully you're full that's you guys <laughs> all right well on that lighter note um we need to uh, move on our agenda we are going into an executive session to Discuss uh, our uh, labor negotiations and uh, a legal matter. And uh, because of the content of that discussion, I'm sorry, Lance, we cannot allow. Uh, oh, I know I'm not welcome, but I do have some questions. <laughs> I do have yes. some questions. Yes. Um, is this board aware of the request uh, for a proposal on? assistance in collective bargaining? This? Yes. How, how did you become aware of this? I mean, how does this board, I don't see any prior discussion or need from the, well, perhaps you weren't here, but at the last meeting, you were. Mm -hmm. How do I find this out surreptitiously? I mean, well, how did this come about? I asked for it. How come I didn't know you asked for it? Well, I didn't ask you to ask for it. I asked for it. I just asked for it. This I said, I, I, I asked to see what we could do. Why? Well, because I feel very strongly that in negotiating contracts, it's important to have legal representation in the room. Is it now? So, so because you don't like it, doesn't no, 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 mean that no, I can't ask no, for it. No, it's, it's not that I don't like it. It's, not it's how this is done. Well, I asked for it. I said, can we look into this? That's how it happened. When? With this board present, you asked for it? No, I asked for it in Holland. Oh, yeah. So we have no money, this agency right now, but you're willing to go out and possibly hire uh, a consultant, which it could possibly. be an attorney, uh, to pay for uh, the assistant that staff needs to do a contract here. When, when let me finish before you get ready to jump in here, well, that there has been no contentious about. negotiations up to this point with the union whatsoever. So if I use the same tone to talk to you, people would think there was contentious negotiations. So first of no, all, no. you can be upset, but you need to watch your tone. Yeah, well, okay. Second of I, all, change it from my tone to the discussion at second, hand. Well, and so when you say it's not contentious, I think you need to understand that your tone plays into contentiousness. 
you know, second of all, to change I this from tone second, to issue here. Okay, then I'll talk to you about the, the issue. Then. then I will talk to you about the issue. Then I'll talk about it publicly. No. I mean, yeah, you ask me a question, right. I'm going to answer. I want to know why this was not brought before the entire board. If no, you and anyone out. else on this it's board is part. operating behind the back of other people, it's illegal. Well, yeah. then I will await my orange jail suit, sir. Oh, you know, see, you try to Here's be serious, and I have to get this smart aleck reply. I, I first Would of all, you, you are phenomenally offensive. Second of all, I own the fact that I asked for it. Thirdly, I work at county government, where we have seven You Are you going to listen to me, or are you going to pounce before I'm done? Well, now you're getting an idea how I felt with your little... So, I work for a county government where there are seven unions, and there are things that appear to be insignificant in a contract that have very significant long-term ramifications. They can be simple things, but you're, you brought up budget. The investment in ensuring that your contract is protects management rights, which is important in cost control, in my opinion, down the road, is a fiscal impact. I don't think we should have to have any of these conversations in public as it relates to labor strategies. That's how it works. Once you decided to have a, a labor union, you created an us be them culture. Whether you like that or not, <laughs> oh that's the reality of it. <laughs> so you them. go into a, that's welcome to union life. You know that as well don't as I know that. Don't you dare say to me, I have 45 years of in union, union life. Rep. Don't you dare say and that. And I have union. experience in, on the management and I am telling you that it is important for management to also ensure that their rights are represented in the process and we're negotiating our first contract I represent the citizens of Island County not just the workers of, of Island Transit and it is important that their rights are respected as well they have some just as the employees have some but so do the citizens everybody needs to bring their A game to the table to ensure the best contract possible and if that offends you I don't know who you've been dealing with with the last 45 years. Well, let me just say that if if if, if there is to be a contract, any contract will have board review and approval. Right. This is not a contract. I understand that. What my concern is this. There have been negotiating sessions conducted since April. From what I understand from the union president that is here is that these negotiations have been very professional on both sides. If the staff at Island Transit, the negotiators, and the union can continue to do productive negotiations, then why should this transit agency be obligated to hire somebody when we aren't at a crisis stage at impasse, for example, yeah. that, hang on, let me finish, that would pay billable hours at no less, I can absolutely guarantee. You know, when you're talking while I'm talking, well, that's I'm rude, rude, that's rude. So let me finish. I'll, I'll let Such my as know I'm instructed by a new adult. I swear to God, I need to practice on patients here. Professional it's billable hours, and they will rack up at no less, no less, I can guarantee, $150 an hour, no less than that, probably exceeding $200 an hour, and then we're going to pay for meals, for lodging. When sessions get into multiple days, this consultant is not going to be running off the island and then coming back. Well, if he, she does, we're going to be paying the travel and the lodging if they don't go home, and et cetera, and it goes on and on and on. Well, what you're proposing so could possibly cost this agency in excess, well, perhaps in excess of $100,000 when there's a staff here that if you have no confidence that they can negotiate a contract until it reaches a point of impasse, then you're not showing any confidence in your own well, negotiators. So I would also say to you that all of those negotiations happen without barred knowledge. The board was not involved in any of those decisions. We have concerns about that, and we're taking some steps. You, so I'm sorry, but I don't know who empowered those negotiations. Every session that you have had an executive session, I have been told, no, labor representatives, stay there. You're not coming in. Why? Because this has to do with labor negotiations, contract negotiations. So I don't know. Did you not hear that, what the attorneys were telling? No, thanks, Lance, but so you're now, not involved. So I'm not the adult. 
I want you to go back and watch Gail's tape and you provide it with him to make sure that you understand, sir, how many times you've insulted me, called me names, been rude, been disrespectful, and I think when you listen back, you will realize that this temper tantrum is yours. Let me tell you something. Perhaps if it was me, it's your attitude, okay, that sets me off because you're smart and think you're smarter than every other person on this board. I don't could think you, that, actually. Could we both? Uh, I don't think that. Well, I'll tell you, this, this, this to me is ridiculous at this time. And you talk about being responsible for the citizens of Island Transit and their monies. No, This is a waste right now. I'm, a, I'm responsible for the citizens of Island County to ensure that they are well represented in the contract negotiation. And if you think that's not my responsibility... You got the, you got the rhetoric down, but your actions aren't showing it. I appreciate yeah, I, I your, I, 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 your I, I, labor discomfort with my desire to protect management. Oh, okay. It's well documented. This is not a public conversation. This is not an item on the agenda. I knew that's that the problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? Transparency. That's the problem. This, this is not an Excuse me. Point of order. This is not an open comment period. We're adjourning to executive session. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> this conversation could have been had in executive session. No. Thank you very much. It but you're not going to include the labor rep. Oh, so stop. that's your yeah, you, it's you you meeting. Oh, yeah. They were supposed to have a public meeting when they were going to approve an RFP in the first place. Right. We haven't released an RFP. Yes, you have. It's on all Enchanted's website. September 9th. It is on Island Enchanted's website under the hidden tab called Procurement with no title on it. We will go into executive session for approximately 30 minutes. Is there business afterwards? There's no business scheduled to be an operational executive session. We're going to approve another RFP. You talk about risk management. Yeah. 